Thanks for the invite for being here. Uh, there's some really interesting crossovers and interesting relationships between ideas. Sophie mentioned assemblage, and this film is very much an assemblage. It's very much a construction, a fabrication. And when I joined Dawn and her colleagues on the, the earlier sociological uh, study, I had a completely open brief as an artist, how to kind of respond to the work uh, and the data that was being generated, and in particular, how to respond to the place. And that's kind of where my practice has been based. Uh, it's site-specific, it's site-related, it's context-based, and just recently, that type of work was referred to as post-studio practice. So there's lots of kind of artistic terms for this idea of engaging with something that's out there. Uh, my one Quan talks about sight existing beyond the physical space, the material, the, the weight, the objects, the, the materiality. It's also a, cult a site can be a cultural site, and it can also be a site of dialogue, communication, and dissemination. So it, the idea of site specificity or site specific response to places and spaces doesn't just reside in the material. And making this video, there was quite a conflict between celebrating heritage and also critiquing it, because there's a sense that the heritage as manifested in the Heritage Centre where we were based, there was a kind of a romanticism about the past and about uh, how Blue Town had become what it was. But the other side of this, it was also a really powerful uh, kind of social glue. It was kind of bringing a community back together and also making it quite resilient. So there are these two kind of sides competing for, for attention, if you like. So hopefully I've managed to do a little bit of both. Uh, it's about a street, and it's a very particular street, and it's a street with only one side, which I'll talk about later if that's of interest. So I'm just going to show the film rather than just talking. So obviously there's quite a lot of performing going on there. We weren't... Uh, observers of that street. We were actually kind of making things happen, instigating interventions, repopulating it with uh, young people who weren't particularly present in that area. Uh, we regendered the space as well because the, the driving forces behind the Heritage Centre are all women and it was historically a very male space and that's all changed. So it's yeah, an interesting piece of work in terms of what do you do with data? Once you digitise anything, it's completely malleable and could be abused or used. It's kind of, that's open for debate, really. I think for a lot of artists, the social and sociology, ethnography, they're, they're really rich areas and my big concern for me is just not being an expert in those fields and making sure that what I bring is from the area and practice that I understand and kind of feel comfortable with. Uh, I've seen dances where kind of it's, the pieces have been devised for, for older people and it's kind of, again, that's about storytelling and reminiscence and it does work. It's just... I don't know, I don't know where, not where you draw the line, but how you would judge the success of them. I mean, I think there's, just from the conversations that have been had this morning, I think there's a rich area in terms of making visible certain aspects of, of research and things that maybe happened on the street or in any, any situation. You, I think as artists, we can help make things visible in some form or other. But I think it's really dangerous ground in lots of respects because of this, the ethical side of it and also the rigour that may come with particular disciplines. I'm quite happy to ride roughshod over that and kind of play with it in a way. But that, I could imagine that offending quite a lot of people. But I did find reading the ethics documents quite illuminating. <laughs> And, yeah, I, my behaviour has been modified quite dramatically. 
part of the the kind of the critique of the of the heritage industry and the kind of the the way heritage was being portrayed or spoken about within Blue Town was to actually look at what's there. So I literally photographed every building that was still in existence or extent extant, and then using Photoshop, we just cut out all the background, so there's absolutely no, no clutter whatsoever. So it was this really stark appraisal of what's there, what, what is still rem remains of Blue Town High Street. And that was the starting point. And it was a little, one of the problems with projects like this is you are, I always think it might be the last thing I ever do. So too many ideas get thrown into the pot, really. And kind of looking at this, with hindsight, I would change quite a lot, and I would cut out and make it much simpler. It did become a bit of a melting pot for lots of possibilities and exploration. So whether it's, it's a great piece of art or video, I don't know. But as we began to open up the process to other participants and contributions, we ran a series of workshops with older people and younger people. And the younger people, it was their opportunity, in a way, to to talk about or contribute to the redevelopment debate. And that's where the drawings of, I don't know, it was Colin's cool clothes shop came from and the game shop and things like that. So it was to, give, to make their kind of hopes, desires, thoughts about redevelopment visible. And we just elected to use those spaces off the high street as a way of kind of alluding to what was behind it and also using it to repopulate to bring those young people back into the into the high street so they, they went off on a tour with Jenny Herkitt who's the director of the uh, Heritage Centre and we just filmed them as they emerged back onto the high street at different points so it was quite playful in a way and then the the bike ride was a, an illusion to the Dockers bike ride but it was the, the solo woman cyclist going in the right way I think so there were kind of like little openings back into what's, what's also behind the scenes. And the walk with the older people was just a group who got together to try to place the historical buildings as well and, to, to, and also to be able to place where some of the reminiscence commentaries were talking about. So where was the bakers? Because there was no evidence from... Uh, photographs, maps, diagrams, things we had. And that became quite an interesting process because people weren't sure. There were arguments about where things were. And the actual workshop with the old people was, was quite raucous, actually. They were quite angry about being sure that they knew where things were and other people didn't. Hmm. But we, we then did a walk as well after that. And that's when some of the other conversations grew. So they then performed revisiting the street. But what I was struck by was we couldn't see what they could see and what they were seeing. And I, that gap or void, I think, is, is fascinating, actually. And I don't know how, just coming back to kind of your earlier question, that's something for me to think about, you know. But the Heritage Centre, which I haven't really spoken about, is in what was the old Criterion uh, Theatre. So that's there. And Jenny Herkett, the, the director, is very much involved with all those conversations. And it's become a place where meetings actually take place now, that Swale Borough Council come down and they, talk, they will talk and meet the community in that space. So, yeah, the older generation who want to be involved in those conversations have a place where they can go. And the kids, there's no young kids actually living in Blue Town then. They were brought in from a youth club uh, from another town. So I, don't, I have no idea what their relationship is with it. But it just felt important to kind of get their mark, make, get their contribution as part of the, the video. Why was it blue? Oh, no. Uh, before they built the dock wall, it, there was an open access from the, the town into the dockyard. And the original houses were all built out of pieces of wood that the, uh, the labourers, craftspeople, whoever, could take out of the dockyard. And it, everything was just painted, not navy blue, but the, the blue of the, the, the naval dockyard.
and they were originally called Blue Houses, and then that became Blue Town over time. But the original Blue Houses were all burnt down in one of the many fires that also cleared the dockyard as well at various times. Uh, the, the building of the wall that separated Blue Town from the dockyard, from the you know the, the private dwellings, from the, the workspaces, was as a result of one of those fires, and it was late eight, uh, early 1800s. So it was part of a bigger set of fortifications that were built. So there's no, I don't think the, the blue that's used there is the original. Is that it? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time for lunch. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>